May 21. Solomon Judges Wisely Some time later, two prostitutes came to the king to have an argument settled. Please, my lord, one of them began, this woman and I live in the same house. I gave birth to a baby while she was with me in the house. Three days later, this woman also had a baby. We were alone. There were only two of us in the house. But her baby died during the night when she rolled over on it. Then she got up in the night and took my son from beside me while I was asleep. She laid her dead child in my arms and took mine to sleep beside her. And in the morning when I tried to nurse my son, he was dead. But when I looked more closely in the morning light, I saw that it wasn't my son at all. Then the other woman interrupted. It certainly was your son, and the living child is mine. No, the first woman said, the living child is mine, and the dead one is yours. And so they argued back and forth before the king. Then the king said, Let's get the facts straight. Both of you claim the living child is yours, and each says that the dead one belongs to the other. All right, bring me a sword. So a sword was brought to the king. Then he said, Cut the living child in two and give half to one woman and half to the other. Then the woman, who was the real mother of the living child and who loved him very much, cried out, Oh, no, my lord, give her the child. Please do not kill him. But the other woman said, All right. He will be neither yours nor mine. Divide him between us. Then the king said, Do not kill the child, but give him to the woman who wants him to live, for she is his mother. When all Israel heard the king's decision, the people were in awe of the king, for they saw the wisdom God had given him for rendering justice. Preparations for Building the Temple King Hiram of Tyre had always been a loyal friend of David. When Hiram learned that David's son Solomon was the new king of Israel, he sent ambassadors to congratulate him. Then Solomon sent this message back to Hiram. You know that my father David was not able to build a temple to honor the name of the Lord his God because of the many wars waged against him by surrounding nations. He could not build until the Lord gave him victory over all his enemies. But now the Lord my God has given me peace on every side. I have no enemies, and all is well. So I am planning to build a temple to honor the name of the Lord my God, just as he had instructed my father David. For the Lord told him, Your son, whom I will place on your throne, will build the temple to honor my name. Therefore, please command that cedars from Lebanon be cut for me. Let my men work alongside yours, and I will pay your men whatever wages you ask. As you know, there is no one among us who can cut timber like you Sidonians. When Hiram received Solomon's message, he was very pleased and said, Praise the Lord today for giving David a wise son to be king of the great nation of Israel. Then he sent this reply to Solomon. I have received your message, and I will supply all the cedar and cypress timber you need. My servants will bring the logs from the Lebanon mountains to the Mediterranean Sea and make them into rafts and float them along the coast to whatever place you choose. Then we will break the rafts apart so you can carry the logs away. You can pay me by supplying me with food for my household. So Hiram supplied as much cedar and cypress timber as Solomon desired. In return, Solomon sent him an annual payment of 100,000 bushels of wheat for his household and 110,000 gallons of pure olive oil. So the Lord gave wisdom to Solomon just as he had promised, and Hiram and Solomon made a formal alliance of peace. Then King Solomon conscripted a labor force of 30,000 men from all Israel. He sent them to Lebanon in shifts, 10,000 every month, so that each man would be one month in Lebanon and two months at home. Adoniram was in charge of this labor force. Solomon also had 70,000 common laborers, 80,000 quarry workers in the hill country, and 3,600 foremen to supervise the work. At the king's command, they quarried large blocks of high-quality stone and shaped them to make the foundation of the temple. Men from the city of Gebel helped Solomon's and Hiram's builders prepare the timber and stone for the temple. Solomon decided to build a temple to honor the name of the Lord and also a royal palace for himself. He enlisted a force of 70,000 laborers, 80,000 men to quarry stone in the hill country, and 3,600 foremen. Solomon also sent this message to King Hiram at Tyre. 
Send me cedar logs, as you did for my father David when he was building his palace. I am about to build a temple to honor the name of the Lord my God. It will be a place set apart to burn fragrant incense before him, to display the special sacrificial bread, and to sacrifice burnt offerings each morning and evening, on the Sabbaths, at new moon celebrations, and at the other appointed festivals of the Lord our God. He has commanded Israel to do these things forever. This must be a magnificent temple, because our God is greater than all other gods. But who can really build him a worthy home? Not even the highest heavens can contain him. So who am I to consider building a temple for him, except as a place to burn sacrifices to him? So send me a master craftsman who can work with gold, silver, bronze, and iron, as well as with purple, scarlet, and blue cloth. He must be a skilled engraver who can work with the craftsmen of Judah and Jerusalem who were selected by my father David. Also send me cedar, cypress, and red sandalwood logs from Lebanon, for I know that your men are without equal at cutting timber in Lebanon. I will send my men to help them. An immense amount of timber will be needed, for the temple I am going to build will be very large and magnificent. In payment for your woodcutters, I will send 100,000 bushels of crushed wheat, 100,000 bushels of barley, 110,000 gallons of wine, and 110,000 gallons of olive oil. King Hiram sent this letter of reply to Solomon. It is because the Lord loves his people that he has made you their king. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, who made the heavens and the earth. He has given King David a wise son, gifted with skill and understanding, who will build a temple for the Lord and a royal palace for himself. I am sending you a master craftsman named Huram Abai, who is extremely talented. His mother is from the tribe of Dan in Israel, and his father is from Tyre. He is skillful at making things from gold, silver, bronze, and iron, and he also works with stone and wood. He can work with purple, blue, and scarlet cloth and fine linen. He is also an engraver and can follow any design given to him. He will work with your craftsmen and those appointed by my lord David, your father. Send along the wheat, barley, olive oil, and wine that my Lord has mentioned. We will cut whatever timber you need from the Lebanon mountains and will float the logs in rafts down the coast of the Mediterranean Sea to Joppa. From there, you can transport the logs up to Jerusalem. Solomon took a census of all foreigners in the land of Israel, like the census his father had taken, and he counted 153,600. He assigned 70,000 of them as common laborers, 80,000 as quarry workers in the hill country, and 3,600 as foremen. Solomon Builds the Temple It was in mid-spring in the month of Ziv, during the fourth year of Solomon's reign, that he began to construct the temple of the Lord. This was 480 years after the people of Israel were rescued from their slavery in the land of Egypt. The temple that King Solomon built for the Lord was 90 feet long, 30 feet wide, and 45 feet high. The entry room at the front of the temple was 30 feet wide, running across the entire width of the temple. It projected outward 15 feet from the front of the temple. Solomon also made narrow recessed windows throughout the temple. He built a complex of rooms against the outer walls of the temple all the way around the sides and rear of the building. The complex was three stories high, the bottom floor being seven and a half feet wide, the second floor nine feet wide, and the top floor ten and a half feet wide. The rooms were connected to the walls of the temple by beams resting on ledges built out from the wall, so the beams were not inserted into the walls themselves. The stones used in the construction of the temple were finished at the quarry, so there was no sound of hammer, axe, or any other iron tool at the building site. The entrance to the bottom floor was on the south side of the temple. There were winding stairs going up to the second floor, and another flight of stairs between the second and third floors. After completing the temple structure, Solomon put in a ceiling made of cedar beams and planks. As already stated, he built a complex of rooms on three sides of the building, attached to the temple walls by cedar timbers. Each story of the complex was seven and a half feet high. Then the Lord gave this message to Solomon. Concerning this temple you are building, if you keep all my decrees and regulations and obey all my commands, I will fulfill through you the promise I made to your father David. 
I will live among the Israelites and will never abandon my people Israel. So Solomon began to build the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem on Mount Moriah, where the Lord had appeared to David his father. The temple was built on the threshing floor of Aruna the Jebusite, the site that David had selected. The construction began in mid-spring during the fourth year of Solomon's reign. These are the dimensions Solomon used for the foundation of the temple of God, using the old standard of measurement. It was 90 feet long and 30 feet wide. The entry room at the front of the temple was 30 feet wide, running across the entire width of the temple, and 30 feet high. He overlaid the inside with pure gold. He paneled the main room of the temple with cypress wood, overlaid it with fine gold, and decorated it with carvings of palm trees and chains. He decorated the walls of the temple with beautiful jewels and with gold from the land of Parvaim. He overlaid the beams, thresholds, walls, and doors throughout the temple with gold, and he carved figures of cherubim on the walls. He made the most holy place thirty feet wide, corresponding to the width of the temple, and thirty feet deep. He overlaid its interior with twenty-three tons of fine gold. The gold nails that were used weighed twenty ounces each. He also overlaid the walls of the upper rooms with gold. He made two figures shaped like cherubim, overlaid them with gold, and placed them in the most holy place. The total wingspan of the two cherubim standing side by side was thirty feet. One wing of the first figure was seven and a half feet long, and it touched the temple wall. The other wing, also seven and a half feet long, touched one of the wings of the second figure. In the same way, the second figure had one wing seven and a half feet long that touched the opposite wall. The other wing, also seven and a half feet long, touched the wing of the first figure. So the wingspan of the two cherubim side by side was thirty feet. They stood on their feet and faced out toward the main room of the temple. Across the entrance of the most holy place, he hung a curtain made of fine linen, decorated with blue, purple, and scarlet thread, and embroidered with figures of cherubim. From First Kings, the temple's interior. So Solomon finished building the temple. The entire inside from floor to ceiling was paneled with wood. He paneled the walls and ceilings with cedar, and he used planks of cypress for the floors. He partitioned off an inner sanctuary, the most holy place, at the far end of the temple. It was thirty feet deep and was paneled with cedar from floor to ceiling. The main room of the temple outside the Most Holy Place was sixty feet long. Cedar paneling completely covered the stone walls throughout the temple, and the paneling was decorated with carvings of gourds and open flowers. He prepared the inner sanctuary at the far end of the temple, where the Ark of the Lord's Covenant would be placed. This inner sanctuary was thirty feet long, thirty feet wide, and thirty feet high. He overlaid the inside with solid gold. He also overlaid the altar made of cedar. Then Solomon overlaid the rest of the temple's interior with solid gold, and he made gold chains to protect the entrance to the most holy place. So he finished overlaying the entire temple with gold, including the altar that belonged to the most holy place. He made two cherubim of wild olive wood, each fifteen feet tall, and placed them in the inner sanctuary. The wingspan of each of the cherubim was fifteen feet, each wing being seven and a half feet long. The two cherubim were identical in shape and size. Each was fifteen feet tall. He placed them side by side in the inner sanctuary of the temple. Their outspread wings reached from wall to wall, while their inner wings touched at the center of the room. He overlaid the two cherubim with gold. He decorated all the walls of the inner sanctuary and the main room with carvings of cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers. He overlaid the floor in both rooms with gold. For the entrance to the inner sanctuary, he made double doors of wild olive wood with five-sided doorposts. These double doors were decorated with carvings of cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers. The doors, including the decorations of cherubim and palm trees, were overlaid with gold. Then he made four-sided doorposts of wild olive wood for the entrance to the temple. There were two folding doors of cypress wood, and each door was hinged to fold back upon itself. These doors were decorated with carvings of cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers, all overlaid evenly with gold. 
The walls of the inner courtyard were built so that there was one layer of cedar beams between every three layers of finished stone. The foundation of the Lord's temple was laid in mid-spring in the month of Ziv, during the fourth year of Solomon's reign. The entire building was completed in every detail by mid-autumn in the month of Bul, during the eleventh year of his reign. So it took seven years to build the temple.